Welcome to Side Effects, Effect versus Affect. It's hard to know the difference. At McGowan Bravender, our goal is to provoke you to think differently about employee benefits, your employees, and the status quo. That's why it's Side Effects with an A. Join me, Kenzie McEvely, an MB co-host and one of the industry's brightest guests to dive deep into the process of good employee benefits. Let's get started. Side Effects listeners, you're about to embark on a new podcast series with a special guest you've heard from before, Director of Strategy and Innovation, Dave Holman. With over 30 years in the benefits industry, Dave is always three steps ahead. And when the great resignation began, Dave was one of the first to notice the red flags. He saw how the pandemic had affected the workforce regarding recruiting and retention and anticipated a shift. At MB, we pride ourselves on being a proactive insurance broker and knew we had to act now to prepare our clients for the challenges they would face. Our customers count on us to provide the latest and greatest approach to employee benefits. Without further delay, let's welcome Dave Homan to the show. Good morning, Dave. How are you today? Well, I was doing much better before I heard your intro and it said over 30 <laughs> years of experience because you can't put a twist on that and no. make you sound young at all. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe you started when you were five. So here we go. Well, I'm, that still makes me old. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we are in a different environment here. We are in their studio. We thought just me and you will have a conversation like usual, but in the control room today. Yeah, and this is for podcasts. This is where I'm most comfortable because this is generally where I will will sit and uh, right. work on the podcast. Well, I appreciate you being in front of the camera today because you are an expert on the new member journey, which we are about to dive into, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. The biggest initiative that uh, our team has going on in 2022. Yep. So just to start the listeners off with kind of the background of this new member journey, a few months ago, you asked our team, you made us do an exercise and you asked us a few questions. So share with the listeners what you said. Yeah. And, and the reason we started with an exercise and not just talking about solutions is, is so much of the time we want to jump straight to the solution unless everybody is on the same page and understand what the problem is. Right. You don't really know what you're trying to solve. And mm-hmm. so uh, what I did was I've been at McGowan Brave Vendor. It's almost 20 years. And so what we did was we took an X. Ex- that doesn't make me feel any younger say, either. You just did that to yourself. <laughs> I so. just did it myself. So uh, I started back and I said, okay, let's go back to January 2003 when I started. Mm-hmm. And let's go through some of the big changes that we've gone through in the employee benefits world. Right. And so we talked about um, a, a lot of... Uh, Uh, HIPAA being implemented. Mm -hmm. We talked about the advent of consumer directed healthcare. We talked about ACA. Yeah. Um, And so as we go through, uh, and we talked about a greater call for engagement and and overall consumerism. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I said, just let's set that aside. So let's think about everything that has changed. And those are pretty big changes. Those aren't small pebbles. Those are big rocks. Mm -hmm. So then I said, let's set that aside for a minute. And then let's do an exercise. And I said, so um, going back to 2003, how would you get the news? I think it was people said newspaper, newspapers, TV you, channel. Yeah, you yeah. watch the news at 6 and 11. Right. And I talked about if you had to change a water filter on your on your fridge, how would you do it? The manual. The manual. Because <laughs> back then, that, that was... You had to find the paper right. to do it. And um, we talked about if you were going home from work and you wanted to order dinner, how did you do it? And they'd say, well. You drove there and you picked it up and or you did, was drive through around in 2003? drive through was, okay. but most of the time you'd go there, you'd order your food and you'd just sit in the car till it was ready. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, we talked about when you needed to look up a phone number. What did you do? Yellow pages. Yellow pages. Yeah. So I was nine then, by the way. Yeah. Not to hurt your feelings anymore. <laughs> yeah. And and then the, the joke kind of came up when, you know, when would you use Amazon? And mm-hmm. people would say when you needed to order a book. Because Weird. Because that's what it was known for. Right. So I, I then asked the same people um, that were from that age group, how do all of those activities of daily living today? So I'd say, how do you get your news? And they say from... Today? Yeah. Twitter? Twitter. Yeah, And it's always media? small little bites. Don't give me a big article. Just give me small exactly. digestible bites. Mm-hmm. And and uh, if you need to change a water filter, how do you do it? 
Um, Google, or YouTube, Google. Yeah. Yep. Go to YouTube and you watch mm -hmm. a video and you you kind of do it while you're watching it. Um, you talk about ordering food. What do you do when you get in your car? An app, DoorDash, yeah. Grubhub. And, yeah. and so when you get home, the food is waiting for you. Um, or it's it's ready to pick up. You pull into a space yep. and you text them a number and, and two minutes later, the food's in your car and you're driving home. And then um, I asked them, what is the one piece of technology that that you would be lost with today if you didn't have by your side 24-7? Phone. A cell phone. <laughs> smartphone. A smartphone. Yep. Not just a phone. Not just not a, flip, just a phone. flip phone or a jitterbug no, no, no. for for people that have been in the industry for 30 years, yeah, it's, no. a, it's a smartphone. <laughs> so I, I asked those people, then let's take the conversations we've set aside and let's bring it back into benefits. Mm -hmm. And I said, so um, think about everything that's happened in our industry, but how are we still in large part delivering benefits and administering benefits and engaging the member in, in right. today's world? And they said, well... Paper? Not a not a whole lot's changed. We're still doing it paper based. Yeah. We're still getting people together that one time a year for the big healthcare summit renewal meeting. Yep. But uh, you know we're not necessarily engaging them in the same intensity throughout the year. There are, there are different levels of engagement, but mm -hmm. nowhere near open enrollment is. Mm -hmm. And you t you talk about. Um, consumer directed plans and and the reason that they were so slow in adoption and the reason that it never really got the momentum out of the gate that it needed to was we assumed that that people would naturally become smart consumers overnight right when before the healthcare experience was you had an ID card mm -hmm. you took an ID card to the doctor and yep. they would tell you if there was a copay or it would be sent into insurance. Correct. And that was really the healthcare experience. And now what we were doing was we were expecting to um, engage in health management mm -hmm. and make smart decisions based off of cost and quality. And when you need an MRI, are you going to the right place? Then there are all these disease management programs. You have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, right. you have musculoskeletal issues. We have customized decisions for you, mm -hmm. but we expect you to connect the dots. And um, it, it's missing a little it, connection. It, there. It's missing the engagement right. um, in all of that. And so um, to, to bring things around to your question, the member journey is here we are today. Um, and then on top of it, you put COVID layered on it. Yes. And it's, and it's very scary mm -hmm. because um, what we saw was a, we, we saw a downward slope right before COVID where we were seeing a lot of the baby boomers leaving. 2019. The, yep starting to leave the, the workplace, and they were being backfilled by um, not millennials even per se, but uh, Gen Z, mm -hmm. or we'll call them Zoomers, Zoomers. for, for uh, this conversation. But there was a whole different set of needs and wants that they were seeing. Mm -hmm. We thought that it would be gradual, and we actually started the conversation about the member journey back in 2019, and then we had a little thing called the global pandemic. Threw us and, off for a few years. <laughs> and, and what happened? The baby boomers decided, we're checking out now, life's too short, I don't need this, don't wanna come back to it. Exactly. And so there was this huge downward slope from mm -hmm. a gradual slope, and then on top of it, when we thought we were coming out of COVID, we thought, things will return to normal. And it didn't no, happen no. that way. We ran right into the great resignation mm -hmm. where people were just quitting their jobs because for a number of reasons, and we could spend a whole nother podcast Correct. on that, but um, people looked at it and said, you know what? I, I'm i used to a different lifestyle. Right. I'm used to remote working. I'm work, used to flexible hours. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, they were getting some financial assistance that they weren't Stimulus getting payments, before. Yeah. So so they had more options. Mm -hmm. It's it's an amazing thing what you'll do when you don't have any money in your bank account to work. Right. But uh, people were just looking for different things. They realized there was a mental toll and a mental stress. And so there's a whole bunch of different factors. It cre has created the perfect storm. Exactly. And so that that brings me to my question. You hit on it a little bit with the boomers exiting. What else has changed in the world, in the workforce, 
it's an employee's market now. So what other things are we it, seeing it, from this? It is. People are leaving for, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, people are leaving for a quarter an hour pay increase down the road. I don't even They're, know if it's about pay anymore. It's no, about lifestyle. It's, and, a, it's about lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to do with what's important to them. Right. I grew up in an era Mm -hmm. where benefits were, after salary, everything was about benefits. And Mm -hmm. my parents hammered it into, and I'm a a Gen Xer, it was hammered into our mind. It's got to have a great medical plan, good 401k plan. Dental, vision. Yeah, those are the the solid things. And and Mm -hmm. you would stay at a job just because of those benefits long term because they were so important. And not anymore. <laughs> it's not important because how has the profile changed with uh, with the Zoomers? Well, number one, because of ACA, mm-hmm. most of them that are being hired are not even on your company medical plan. Correct. They're on their parents' plan until they're, they're 26. 26. Yeah. So you take a big selling point of what employers continue to promote mm-hmm. in, a, in a benefits package, and it's just not important to them, number one. Number two, they have different responsibilities. This this um, generation carries a great student debt load. Absolutely. And so they are consumed with how do I get rid of this student loan debt? Mm-hmm. And so here we are offering these really rich medical plans. And they would, in, in essence, if they were on your plan... Or when they become, when they come on your plan, mm-hmm. they'd rather have a less expensive plan that they could then take those additional benefit dollars and use them towards, towards tuition reimbursement right. or other benefits that offer an immediate gratification or payback to them. Exactly. It's, you know, if you have a benefit and you're paying for it and you never use it, it doesn't make it's you feel really good. It's not really a benefit. No, well, that's exactly what I was going to ask is. With these new generations in the workforce, the majority is millennials and Gen Zers or Zoomers. Uh-huh. What what are they changing? They want immediate gratification. They want instant results. What other kind of things are they? What are the trends? Well, work life balance is huge. Do not underestimate that. Where right. where uh, again, the previous generations, your work day was an eight to five job, or mm-hmm. if you were a real um, a real hero, you'd work hours on either end of them. But then when work was done, you'd go home mm-hmm. and you would compartmentalize work from your everyday life. Yep. Um, Zoomers and millennials live 24 seven lives. Everything blends together and you don't see things compartmentalized. So I'm guilty of that. Yeah, I'm and- on my phone checking the go and brave under social media 10 at night. Yeah. yeah. And, and there are times during the day where you need to take care of other things that aren't right. work related. But in your mind, if the work gets done, it gets done. You're accomplishing the same goal. Plus, mm-hmm. you are not as stressed about it. So you handle things in your time on your time. Exactly. And it works out well. So there is a big conflict mm-hmm. between older generations, younger generations about that. And, um, we have to recognize that at the employer level that if we don't change, um, if we're not able to change and be more flexible, that's the, the problem isn't going to get better. It's and and they are calling the shots right now. Uh, for the longest time, employers called the shots, mm-hmm. and and even from the Go and Braybender side, the broker, we counseled, we advised the mm-hmm. the the employer, and we worked together, but we were so heavily relied on for benefit advice and direction. Right. Not anymore. <laughs> I mean, the data is telling us that now, now more than ever, employers are listening to employees and and what is important to them. Mm-hmm. The employers are trying to figure out how do we do that? The problem is they don't have the solutions. They just recognize it's a big growing problem. Right. And that's where we've gotten pretty creative with now instead of counseling them, we're, they're telling us, okay, our, we're doing engagement surveys. Our employees are telling us they want this, this, and this. What can you offer for us? And that's where our teams have really gotten creative and done some research outside the box. Yeah, and I think in the next podcast episode, we're actually going to talk about some mm-hmm. of the specific benefits that, that they're looking for. That they're looking for and what's right. important. And it's like, this isn't your grandma. This isn't your grandfather's or grandma's <laughs> Oldsmobile Cadillac. This yeah. is, it's a new world and we have to think mm-hmm. outside the box. And, and a lot of them are non, um, 
non-traditional traditional. benefits. Well, um, our last podcast, we had Michael Denisoff, the CEO and president of um, the ERA. And he, we joked a lot about how uh, employees now are working on the beaches of Bora Bora because they don't care if it's 2 a.m. In, in the U.S. They want to be where they are and get their, res- their projects done. And if the results are there, that's all that matters now. They work on their hours, their time. And we really hit on the different generations. So can you tell our listeners what um, the age ranges are, the classifications of each major generation right now? Yeah, Gen Z is 11 to 24. Your millennials are 25 to 41. Uh, Gen Xers, the greatest generation, mind you. Yes, 42 (laughs) to... I think 56, uh, 57. 57, it just depends on the cutoff. It, It depends, but... For purposes of this discussion, we'll say 57. Mm-hmm. And then your your boomers are 58 plus. And, right. and that generation is, uh, I, I can't speak to the speed at which they are exiting the workforce right now. Mm-hmm. And, and the biggest generation in the workforce right now are the millennials. You whoop, guys whoop. are, yeah, you guys are calling the shots. Yeah. Welcome well, to the show. We've been trained <laughs> by the Gen Xers and some of the boomers. And so... Um, what do you think about, what do you think about how we're all going to blend together? Do you think that we are, the Zoomers and the Millennials are rubbing off on the Gen X? Are the Gen X adapting to our technology or what do you think? Um, I think the Gen Xers are going to be the generation that, that does adapt, Mm -hmm. um, much easier than the Boomers because it's one generation removed. Um, while technology is going to play a huge role in where we go and what we do. Right. And even though Gen Xers are not native to technology, mm-hmm. they have been exposed and they've adapted very well and, and come along. And oh, yeah. they use technology in, in every part of their life right now. I agree. And that brought me to my next question of the what we brought up earlier about how benefits are kind of old school and the, we have paper based and it's slow and it seems so dated and so how are we going to get this technology introduced yeah. well and i i will tell you what's really going to help is as more millennials enter into the c suite position and benefits mm-hmm. in hr because which is happening right now yeah because yeah. um not to offend any gen xers out there that are in uh, the C-suite position right now, mm-hmm. but you you only know what you know. You you were brought up in an environment where it was largely paper based. Yeah. Um, the insurance and the benefits industry in general is not pushing you to change to this point because mm-hmm. I I always say they move at the speed of smell. It's we it's have a, not invo- evolved. No, 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 not at the not at the speed. And so, um, the Gen Xers are are going to have to learn on the fly, but the millennials are going to be at their heels pushing change. Right. And, and, and in all honesty, so much of the functions that are done in HR are transactional in nature. Yeah. They're, they're check the box there. It's easier to do paper because it's, you get it done and you move on mm-hmm. and you to put out your next fire. And the millennials are going to bring an element of strategy um, and a lot of it has to do with the experiential learning right. that the schools have changed and gone to during the millennials, um, you know, primary, secondary education. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so they are much, they are much more big picture global thinkers that are out there. Mm-hmm. And, and in the back of their mind, um, they also have this element of it's very, they're very cause driven, Absolutely. And so they don't look at HR and benefits as um, a task that needs to be done. They look at it as a cause to improving the life, to offer greater flexibility, right. to to build a stronger company culture. And so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the inner driving force that they have. And it's not to say that Gen Xers don't have that, mm-hmm. but Gen Xers have, have have kind of even been thrown into the fray a lot more because all the baby boomers that were C-suite exiting so quickly, the Gen Xers have kind of been, let me pick up all the pieces in the middle of a global pandemic, yeah. in the middle of the great resignation, throw me- Easy. Yeah, <laughs> throw me a life raft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioning that as a millennial, some of my favorite benefits at MB, unlimited PTO- we get eight hours to do MB Gives Back volunteer hours. Like, I fit the mold of a millennial very well. Because, yes. yeah, I agree. I want it to I want it to feel like I'm doing something and it means something. And, it's- and, 
flexible. <laughs> and, and that's true. And it's a, it's a shifted mindset. And when I spoke to a group uh, inside our office last week, I said, I will raise my hand and say that I was 100% wrong. Mm-hmm. We went to unlimited PTO mm-hmm. during the pandemic. We went to a more casual dress code. Yep, dress for your day. And the mm-hmm. big thing was a, a hybrid work from home model. Right. Um, and I looked at that and I thought, oh my gosh, as a Gen Xer where we are typically cynical by nature <laughs> and we're more head down, be tough about it, yeah. trudge through, um, follow the rules. Mm-hmm. And I looked at that and I said, oh my gosh, productivity is going to drop off. We're just not going to get we're not going to deliver the same level of service. Right. People are not going to be happy. And um, we have just, you know, we're coming out of a year where where we had an unbelievable retention year. We did. We mm-hmm. had a great growth year. Mm-hmm. We're doing some a lot of spectacular things. And we've figured out how to harness technology to make that work. Um, and and that's helping us actually on the recruiting side of things. During COVID, we hired what seventy seventy people, 70 mm-hmm. people at McGowan Braybender. It's crazy. And 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 just it's almost a non-starter now. Mm-hmm. When when you look at because um, the millennials that were out there, the Zoomers that are coming to the workforce, mm-hmm. a lot of them were out there during a time when everything was. Remote. Work, it work wasn't even an home. option. It's yeah. a non-starter now. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that option, mm-hmm. you won't even be considered oh. um, an employer. If you don't have flexible work hours, mm-hmm. unlimited PTO, that was unheard of. That was something that only like the Fortune 500 companies Google. would offer before. Yeah. 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 And now it's um, it's crazy. Common. It's it's almost an expectation out there. It is wild. I, I feel like I'm on the kind of a bubble here because when I first graduated college, I was had very rigid schedule, like very set PTO. Everything was I'm and I'm a rule follower. And then as this past eight years have gone by, it has changed so much. And I had only ever worked in the office. I've never had a remote day. And then when COVID hit, we were like, okay, we were fully remote. And then now we come back and we have a day at home. And it is just I I feel like I am so grateful for it because I saw both sides and I'm like, wow, seeing how this has transitioned and then adjusting to it is it's been it's been kind of hard honestly as a millennial I I feel like I've I've seen both sides and I like it and it's just one of those things you have to go with the flow yeah so and it's been amazing we're doing we're we're we we started with an internal survey with our employees mm-hmm. and we're getting ready to launch it out with our clients employees so Correct. that we can share data with them about what's important how things have changed maybe um you know, this is in your organization here are areas that you may want to look at and focus on. Mm-hmm. And when you took the survey um, out there and, and the results were resounding, we listed the benefits. We asked people to prioritize and rank the, the benefits that were most important to them. Mm-hmm. And we mix the traditional with the non-traditional yep. and non-traditional benefits superseded the traditional benefits. Mm. And so in your case, what were you know, what were your top three of things that I, were most important? I'm pretty important? sure it was unlimited PTO. Um, I want to say it was the MB gives back. And then I think I wanted pet insurance or there was another. Yeah. Do you remember my answers? I don't, but I know that when we had talked about it, um, even amongst our team, I know mm-hmm. that the flexible work. Oh, yes, 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 Work yes. hours uh, were very important to you. Our Fridays you. from home, yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. So we all know this new member journey is going to happen. And whether people like it or not. So we are in this right now. So what are we hoping to accomplish, especially McGill and Braybender? What are we trying to do here? Well, what we're what we're hoping to do ultimately when you look at deliverables at the end of this project, if we were successful, what we want to do is analyze every step along the member journey. Mm-hmm. That means every time they interact with their benefit program, um, what is during each one of those steps, what is the primal need that needs to be met? Mm-hmm. They're enrolling. They're just, they're deciding on benefits for the first time in their life. They just had a child. What is most important to them? They have a an issue with their insurance company because they got an EOB they don't understand or a bill they shouldn't have received. Right. We want to understand what is the primal need that needs to be met. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the emotion that they're feeling? What are their avenues towards um achieving that goal Mm -hmm. that we're doing today, that the employer is doing today, that the insurance company is doing today. Mm -hmm. And then 
figuring out based on today's world, are we meeting those needs? Right. And if we are, then that's great. But then we want to ask one more question. Well, what was the mindset of that employee when they walked away, that member Mm -hmm. at the end of it? And if we're not accomplishing the goal, um, we know what the mindset's going to be. They're going to be unhappy and it's going to lead to other problems. uh, Because the one thing that we've learned over time is that when people are happy, they may not share their happiness with something. Right. But uh, a goods or service or experience at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. But oh my gosh, if they have <laughs> they have one bad experience. How many people know it? And, mm-hmm. and they used to say they would tell five to seven people on average. Well, with social media today, in impulse and the immediacy of feedback. Oh yeah. And and the um. You the post amount that on of, your Insta story and yeah, a thousand people know. The amount mm-hmm. of braveness that people will show when they can suddenly and impulsively off the top of their head post something. Right. It can create um, issues that are out there. So mm-hmm. think about an unhappy employee that's out on the floor working yep. in, a, in a plant or a person in the office in the kitchen talking about a bad experience or – a deductible, you know, they look at what their, their con and here's the other thing. They look at their contributions that come out per paycheck yep. and they think that covers the entirety of their benefit premium, their medical premium. Wrong. No, it does <laughs> not. But what happens is they, they think they're paying the lion's share of that. Mm-hmm. Then they get a bill for a deductible they haven't met, mm-hmm. or even you, you encourage them as an employer to have a preventive exam. They find something wrong. So it gets miscoded or, or, um, coded in such a way where that person suddenly thought they had $0 copay yep. and they have a $1,500 copay out of pocket. Think about all the problems I just talked about. And that just creates this bad feeling mm-hmm. about benefits. Mm-hmm. And if we could have done some things different along the journey, educate them, get them to ask questions different, be up front right. with them, guide them to the right doctors at the right time. Mm-hmm. We can change that whole experience and mindset. I'm excited for that. As one, I, even just this weekend, thinking about where I would go if I needed information, my first thought would not be a benefit booklet. It would have been an app. It would have been emailing our HR and even anything on my phone that I, if I don't have to get my laptop out, I would rather do everything on my phone. So I totally agree. It's all about your experience. And then it's easily shared. Like, oh, I was able to get that on my phone the other day. It was so easy. I'll send it to you. Let me text you the link. Like, you know, it is. Yeah. And for me, that's what I think is what I want. And we're fairly proactive here at McGill and Brave Bender. I mean, mm-hmm. we just don't go out to our clients and implement plans. We're we're usually the incubator for Correct. ideas. And yep. um, we have a program. You've probably heard it on the podcast, previous episodes, Garner Health. Yep. And we implemented that January 1st mm-hmm. and talking with employees and did you, didn't you use Garner? I did. You did? Yep. And, and the experience, it was a new piece of technology. It mm-hmm. required a higher level of engagement. We were, we were proactive and upfront. And I've heard from, from you, mm-hmm. I believe the comments and other people in the office that, oh my gosh, it was wonderful. So Be- easy, so it- responsive, so fast and professional and no, no hoops to jump through. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. And I, and I look at that experience mm-hmm. and, and bring it back to the member journey. What made that so powerful was an integrated technology yep. that was, that was used as a catalyst. It wasn't, it wasn't a commodity that was thrown in an afterthought or it was, Oh, by the way, we've got this app. Mm-hmm. It was the driver. Mm-hmm. So number one, we use technology. We made it simple and guided the member step one to step two yep. to step three because you couldn't mess up, <laughs> you, you couldn't mess it up. And it gave you kind of an immediacy of feedback. Whereas now so much of the stuff we do with healthcare, we're looking for a referral. We're trying to find a doctor. That's not immediate. That could take right. days or weeks. Yep. And then what it did was it made sure that it provided an answer to you so that we want you to go here. We know that this doctor is accepting new patients. We know that they're filling appointments right now. Yep. How can we help you get into that doctor? Oh, and then on the back end, because we know we're getting you to the right doctor in the right place at the right time, and you're going to receive the highest quality care at a lower cost, we're actually going to share 
the savings with you. Yep. So you look at the, you look at the, we just did a video on it and you said at the end, it, it creates a win, 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 win. win yeah. situation. <laughs> and so you walked out of that. Mm -hmm. I heard you actually telling people it was a great experience when people asked you about it. Oh, absolutely. So that's, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish in the member journey is to create a win, win, win. Appreciate that. Experience. I appreciate you putting a bow on everything yes. for me, Dave. <laughs> so the last question I have for you to wrap up this first this first part of our five part podcast is most benefit programs are built one size fits all. Um, so I'm going to leave our listeners with this question for you: If the younger generations don't value the benefits that the boomers and Gen Xers like, what do they want? And we're going to hint at that for the next episode. So if you want to give yeah. a little teaser, uh, it's it's not necessarily that it's, it, I call them almost vapor benefits. They're not mm. tangible things that may even necessarily have an ID card. They're looking for immediate gratification yep. that fits into their lifestyle mm -hmm. and helps them um, to accomplish the goals that they want at that moment in time. They're not looking for a long game. They're looking for a short game. Absolutely. So, and, and the one thing that I would say to employers is, as you're looking at this and as you listen to the next episode, don't think of the long game because in all honesty, the way that Zoomers and millennials, the whole, I would say almost the whole population right now, yep. it is a, it is an employee's market to be in. Mm -hmm. So don't think with benefits that it's five, six, seven years down the road. Think about it the next 18 to 24 months yep. because that's about the That's average That's all you've got stay. right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, on that little cliffhanger, thank okay. you for joining me, Dave, on episode one. Thanks. I'm very excited for the next episode. And yep. to our listeners, if you have any questions or comments on this, please email me at Kenzie at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or Dave at HealthierBirthdays.com. Yep. And we will see you next time on Side Effects.